Hello and welcome to episode 15 of the WNBL show. It is Indigenous Round in the Signet WNBL and joining me this week as my co-host is Ali Wilson from the Bendigo Spirit as we record today on Nam land in Melbourne, Victoria. Hello, Ali, and welcome. Hello. Thanks for having me on. Glad to be here. Oh, it's great to have you here. So much to catch up on. Uh, we've got a guest coming up today. We'll talk to Nishaya Parker-Williams from the Townsville Fire. She's been on uh, a bit of a trip amongst what's kind of been a buy round in the WNBL over the last week and a bit. Um, she was in the Northern Territory with Abby Cabillo from the Adelaide Lightning and Shanice Swain from the UC Cap thanks to Adobe doing a bit of a visit ahead of Indigenous Round. So we'll catch up with her, which will be great. Um, but you guys, first of all, wore your Indigenous strip at the weekend because you played the Southside Flies and that was the lone game of the weekend. You had the spotlight all to yourselves. Yeah. Yep. Um, just us for that week. And yeah, touching on that trip, I was absolutely devastated that I wasn't able to be a part of that and, and go up there into community with the girls. Um, looked like an awesome trip. Um, just unfortunate that, that we had a game that week. Um, but yeah, really good game between us and Southside. Um, you know, we had a lot to work on from the last time that we played them yeah. and lost by a fair amount. So um, we didn't get the result that we wanted, but we definitely improved on a lot of things in that game. And the latter is so tight, isn't it? Like every win is like gold. Every loss kind of hurts right now because it's such a tight competition as we head towards the run home and to the finals series. But let's have a bit of a chat about what's been happening because it's been two weeks since we were last here um, with a WNBL show episode. And we've had a record WNBL crowd in that time because the first WNBL game was played at John Kane Arena between the Southside Flyers and Sydney. It was a game to honour the GOAT, Lauren Jackson, but it was the Flames and Tiana Mangakar here who spoiled the party. What an incredible night it was. It was an insane game. Yeah, we watched that that game with interest. Um, can't believe the the numbers that turned out. Absolutely stoked to have that for women's basketball. LJ and what she's given to the sport is incredible. Um, but yeah, for the Sydney Flames to, to come in there and, and beat Southside and Tiana to play the way that she did was absolutely incredible. So LJ unfortunately lasted just the 61 seconds before um, doing her Achilles. She's had surgery on that and also the broken foot she'd been playing with. So she's banged up in hospital at the moment. We wish LJ um, all the best in her recovery. Um, what did you think when she went down so early in the game like what went through your mind firstly just devastated for her she's been playing so well um and to see her come back and, and play at such a high level um has been incredible um for the the kids and us me <laughs> that watch basketball um I initially didn't think that it would be too bad I mm. thought that she walked off and she we might see her again um but yeah when she came back out on the crutches um we thought the worst so um absolutely devastated for her yeah it was just that was not how the script was meant to go either was the result because it was the flies big night Sydney and uh, they've had a really unbelievable month obviously a lot of turmoil um in terms of what's happening and unfolding with Shane Hill and Shyla Hill who we'll talk about shortly but they've played some really great basketball, particularly in that month of January, extending into early Feb under Shelley Gorman. Mm -hmm. Tiana has been the absolute star. How great is it to see her stepping up and playing like this? Absolutely. She's been amazing. And um, that's exactly what she's capable mm -hmm. of, her getting that opportunity to to play in the one and, and lead that team from the front. Um, yeah. I, I knew that she was capable of doing that and I'm just happy for her. So a bit of player movement in the last couple of weeks. I mentioned Shiley Hill. She parted ways with the Sydney Flames, which opened the door for her to move to Townsville, who she played with in the 2020 hub season, leading the fire to a grand final appearance. She then was in action for uh, Townsville against Perth in two games last round. Townsville got those two wins, which was super important. Um, I guess for Shyla, she missed a couple of weeks. We want players to be playing. We want them to be out there on court. But um, she reunites with Shannon Seabom and Loz Nicholson, Steph Reed. There's quite a few of them there. And as we know, it was two years ago they got to a grand final. So they certainly are familiar with each other, that group. 
Yeah, definitely. And Townsville are playing some really good basketball at the moment. So adding Shyla into that mix is just going to make them um, even better once she gets settled and, and can learn the plays and sort of how they how they play up there. Um, for sure, there's a lot of familiarity. And they've had some injuries. Of course, uh, Steph Reed's missed a few games with a back injury and then Loz Nicholson's missed a couple as well. So it's going to be interesting over the next couple of weeks as they hopefully bring those two back in. We know that they've been such pace setters for Townsville throughout this season. And then the news at the weekend which kind of links back to you in a bit of a crazy way. We'll get to that. But Leilani Mitchell, who, well, a few games ago, actually, for her in terms of her WNBL career, was Rachel Spawn medalist, grand final MVP for the Flyers again in the hub season when they beat Townsville Fire. Um, she played a few games for Bendigo last season and then um, announced that she was pregnant um, and had little baby Elle last year. You replaced Leilani at Bendigo, didn't you? Yes, I did. See, it all into July I did. in the WNBL. <laughs> anyway, so Leilani's back. She's signed with the Melbourne Boomers for the rest of their season um, and upcoming finals campaign. And I think that takes us to 11 mums in the league. Awesome. Amazing news. Very excited to see Leilani play again. I played with her at Sydney. She's a hell of a player. Um, and adding into that Melbourne team, who are already full of stars, I'm really interested to see how, how she'll slot into that mix. Championship teammates at Sydney. Yes, correct. Yes. What about, and Cheryl was coach? Cheryl was a coach. Yeah, yep. Loz Nicholson was in that team. Yeah, yep. Asia Taylor. Oh. Yeah, we, that was Asia it. Taylor, come back to the WNBL. <laughs> we miss you. I've told her that a hundred times. Yes. I said, yeah, you have to come back and, and play a season with me. See, you can't talk about the WNBL with everything intertwining. Yeah. Like, we've just done it now with that Sydney yeah. team. Blinda Snell. Yep. Snelly in that was team. in there. Yep. Carly Bogue. Carly Bogue. <laughs> Talia Tapea. Yep. 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 Oh, we love a walk down memory lane. We do. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, let's talk about you. You've passed 200 games recently. What did it yeah. mean to learn of that milestone? Because often players don't realise yeah. where they're at in yeah. terms of games played. And what did it mean to you to hit 200? Yeah, I. Yeah, you're right. I didn't know that it was coming up to 200. I mean, you sort of have a fair idea of where it's sitting at, but um, no idea where the time has gone uh, to play 200 games, but really special and to be able to do it with my club and, and my teammates at the moment who I absolutely adore um, was really special. What's it been like um, having this chapter of your career at Bendigo? Because you played at a few teams around mm -hmm. the league, but as we mentioned, you signed to replace Leilani last season. You guys played some great basketball mm. in the back end. Annalee was league MVP. But this group at Bendigo just seems like you just enjoy each other's company so much on and off the floor. Yeah, for sure. Um, there's been times in my career where basketball hasn't been fun mm. and, you know, the group that you play in isn't necessarily – a great environment. So to come into Bendigo and be surrounded by quality people, first and foremost, teammates, coaching staff, you know, physio, all of that sort of stuff. Um, I would never take that for granted. So Bendigo has been really special to me and I absolutely love playing in this team. So that's a big part of when you're playing well, yeah. it's, it's the stuff off the court and the environment that you're in that that contributes to that. We talk about a lot of teams, particularly that are in the top four, five, you know, and we know you guys had an undefeated start to the season. You've been so even, like, so you've got Annalie who won MVP last year. You bring back in Kelsey Griffin, Kelly Wilson, yourself, Abby Wearung, Alicia Froling steps up. Like, it is just constant across the board from Bendigo. Has that been the theme from, you know, first year coach at the Spirit in Kennedy? Yeah, absolutely. Um, We've driven home from preseason that, you know, we run we run deep and there's a lot of it could be anybody's night. Um, you know, we don't rely on one or two people to get the job done every night. So um yeah, adding Kelsey back in there, I can't speak highly enough of Kelsey. Um, Kelly, record games holder, Froles is MVP of the um, NBL One South. So really quality basketball players and people. Have you learned anything in particular from KG twenty three or Kelly? <laughs> um yeah, I well, yeah. As I said before, I could speak about Kelsey for for ages. Um, me she's, too. Do you want to do an episode <laughs> just on Kelsey? Literally, <laughs> me. I was thinking I'll probably just speak the whole time about Kelsey when this I come like on. My here. life. I spend most of my life talking about Kelsey. I know she's the ultimate professional. I've never played with anybody like her. Um, the way she leads our group um, by example and and by you know vocally, um, she's incredible. And um, I will tell a little story here. Um, Please do. <laughs> When I went home to Adelaide um, with my partner, I was saying to her, like, oh, Kelsey says to do this and Kelsey says to do that. Kelsey, Kelsey, Kelsey. And she just turned and looked at me and said, Kelsey's not God. 
And I was like, uh, she sort of is actually. <laughs> So now we have this running inside joke um, that Kelsey's gold and we call Kelsey gold. Oh my so. gosh. And can we just, we have to look down the camera and at Brooke Basham here yeah, because Brooke yeah. Basham, who plays for the Adelaide Lightning, which is where you guys met, yeah. in the hub. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to delve too much into the relationship, but that would have to be one of the best things that came out of that hub season. Yeah. We knew each other before and we'd always sort of been friends, but yeah. That's you sort found of love in the hub. <laughs> <laughs> one good thing to come out of the hub. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, but I love that. But Brooke, Kelsey is God. Yeah, sorry, Brooke, Kelsey is God. Kelsey so. is God. <laughs> oh, I love it so much. Um, it is Indigenous Round uh, in the WNBL this week. These are the T-shirts that you will see um, across the league. Players will be wearing them in warm-ups. You can buy them too as well. So jump on the WNBL website and get them. And I just want to shout out my scrunchie too. This um, is the Flyers um, strip that they're wearing, which is designed um, by Emma Stonehouse. Um, so... Yeah, I just thought I'd wear that today to add a little bit um, to the outfit for the pod recording. But um, what do you like most about Indigenous Round when we see particularly the displays of jerseys across the league? Yeah, absolutely love seeing all the different designs and how creative um, Aboriginal artists can get and the storytelling behind it. I asked Shay um, on this episode, what's the story behind it? Because there's there's always a story, um, which is the most interesting part to me, but... um, Indigenous Round is important because first and foremost, it's a celebration of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander culture. Um, but I think more importantly in this this round this year is education. Mm. Um, and I think that we've done a pretty good job so far. We all jumped on a um, Zoom over the weekend with Paulie Vandenberg, um, who gave a bit of education and he did it in a quiz-like yeah. manner. Uh, so it was interactive and um, really informative. And I know that I've had a lot of feedback from the girls of of how much they've learned about Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander culture just from that alone. So things that we can do like that to continue to do it, um, I think it's great for the league. Speaking of quizzes, there's one that you can take this round, which will give you a really good indication of how much you know, what you need to know, where you can improve in terms of um, your education around it too. So jump on the website and check out the socials. But I guess it's a broader picture, isn't it? Particularly with the education. And um, we spoke off air about wearing the jerseys beyond the actual round, because it's something with, I guess, with all of the causes that we see in sport, it's great to shine a spotlight on it for a round or for a weekend, but how can we extend that message so it's not sort of a once a year thing? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that the NBL have done a really good job and we should follow suit there with they've incorporated Indigenous design into their every week uniform, whether it's just in the trim or, or whatever else have you. I think that's that's really special and something that the WNBL should follow suit for. Mm. Um, having the one round is really good because it is it is all about that. Um, but I think if we can incorporate some stuff into our every week Jersey, that would be really important. Well, just on the NBL, how great was it to see the Taipans wearing their strip um, in the planes at the weekend? Love that. So, Spirit still on track for finals. I want to see you guys rocking it in some finals as you make you return, hopefully, to finals. Hopefully. It's been a few years. Yes, it's ho- been hopefully. A few years. But we need to talk about finals because you guys were the sole game at the weekend um, against the Flyers. The Flyers coming out on top 75 to 69 in Geelong. Great to see a healthy crowd in Geelong. And back to bat losses now um, for the spirit. Where's the confidence at? And um, do you take a lot out of the fact that you've got a double this weekend so you can try and bounce back immediately? Yeah, first and foremost, uh, the crowd in Geelong was absolutely amazing. It was a sold out crowd. The atmosphere in there was wild. So um, yeah, shout out to Geelong for showing out. Uh, That was amazing to be a part of that. Um, Yeah, us, yeah, back to back losses, not ideal at this end of the season. And with it being so pointy and coming into crunch time now, uh, certainly not ideal. Um, We can take a a lot away from that game. And I think that we've made a lot of improvements um, over the last couple of weeks in terms of playing against Melbourne and, and Southside mm. to the top teams in the league. Um, we got the three games left to go, tw- Townsville twice and Perth. Yeah. Um, and hopefully, I think if we win two out of three of those, we should slot into finals. So that's our focus for now. Well, you've had, I guess, those losses to Melbourne and Southside in consecutive weeks. No Kelsey, um, mm. had to talk about her again for the last few <laughs> weeks, but you did beat Melbourne without her and had a really impressive mm. win where everyone really stepped up. So um, it's certainly not a case of like no Kelsey, no Bendigo, mm-hmm. but you've just got to get back to, I guess, that team basketball. We spoke about that earlier, just having contributors across the board. 
Yeah, definitely. I think that when Kelsey went out, um, there was an adjustment period there for us of how we play without Kelsey um, or, or God, as we call her. Uh, so I think that we've done a pretty good job recently of mm. how we sort of fill that void for now. Um, we may see her again. We may not. So we've just got to we've just got to soldier on and and continue to to fill that void as best as we can. So Abby wearing eighteen points at the weekend. I've really loved her last few weeks. For sure. we, we know she's great on the defensive end, but it's mm. been great to see her put some points on the board. Yeah, what Abby brings to our team, it sometimes doesn't show up on the stat sheet. Mm. She's our best defender by far. Um, the energy and effort that she brings at both ends of the floor, and at the moment she is um, shooting the ball at an incredible clip. Mm. So um, we're loving what Abby's sort of bringing to our group. Annalee twelve. Rebounds and nine points. Alicia Froling, 11 points and eight boards. Uh, Kelly Wilson, the Dynamo, 11 points, five rebounds, four assists. She's been great the last few weeks too. Played really well in that win over Melbourne. I mean, when doesn't she play well? But <laughs> she's just a marvel. Yeah, Kelly's great. Um, you know, our, our starting point guard, she leads us. She gets us into our stuff. Um, record games holder, all that experience there. So um, we're settled under Kelly. And then Lavy 10 points off the bench. What kind of addition has she been since she's come in? And, I mean, she's a two-time Olympian too, so just mm. having that impact off the bench must be like gold. Yeah, Lavy's another one that I can't speak highly of. Um, absolutely incredible athlete. Um, what she brings to us and giving us a punch off the bench, which is her role at the moment, um, and, and giving Kelly a rest when, when she needs it, um, is invaluable. So for the Flyers, Kayla Thornton, 19 points and seven rebounds. She's had an incredible year. I've said it before, probably on this podcast, but I feel like if she wasn't in such a studded team, we'd be ranting and raving about her more. But because she's been part of a team that is so deep, I feel like her influence has probably gone under the radar a little bit. Would, do you think that's fair to say? Yeah, definitely. I, I would agree with that. She's an incredible player, super strong. She can do a bit of everything. Um, and yeah, she's on a on a really good team. Um, so I, I would agree with that for sure. Someone else who's in good form is Maddie Rochi. She had 15 and 7. Sarah Blitzarves, 13 and 7. And Beck Cole, 12 points. So, of course, for the Flyers, they're adjusting to life now without LJ. It's a huge loss on the floor, but also in terms of just everything she brings to that group. But we know they've got depth, haven't they? So Abby Bishop comes in and congratulations to Abby, her 4,000th career point Incredible. against you guys. And she also in that game moved to fourth on the all-time rebounds list with 2,306 boards. When you lose LJ, but you've got Abby Bishop coming into the mm. starting five and you've got Carly Ernst as well. I mean, your depth is pretty healthy. Absolutely. Very similar to us um, in terms of us losing Kelsey, them losing LJ and how they'll feel that. But they are very deep and Abby, Carly, they're more than capable of, of filling that void. So Fly's still without their captain, Amy Rochi. Hopefully we might see her a bit closer to finals. Um, and uh, Nadio Pouch didn't play at the weekend through concussion protocols. So um, Fly's had a couple out as well, but hopefully Nads will be back soon because she's been um, a great rising star this season. Ali, let's take a look at the ladder as it stands at the moment. So Boomers are top of the table, 12-4. and four. Townsville also with a 12-4 record. Southside moved to a league high 13 games, but they've got five losses. The Spirit, 11-7. and seven. And then the Lynx are still pushing on 9-7. and seven. And and everyone plays each other this round, which we'll talk about. Um, but it is going to be one hell of a finish. Absolutely. Um, pointy end of the season now, so we'll see what teams are made of. Um, I'm excited to be a part of it and, and see how this um, final four shapes. Well, one of the teams you play this weekend is Townsville. So let's head up there now and chat to this week's special guest on the WNBL show. Time to catch up with this week's guest on the WNBL show as we head up to Townsville and the Bindle and Wulguru Kaba land and welcome Nishaya Parker-Williams from the Townsville Fire. Hello. Hello. It's great to have you on the show this week. You've been very busy and you've been on a big trip leading into Indigenous Round in the WNBL. Can you tell us where you've been and what you've been up to? Yeah, so I flew into Darwin Monday, um, just around lunchtime. Uh, did a lot of media and community work with the younger generation, um, alongside Shanice Swain and Abby Kabilu. It was an awesome trip by the looks of things, certainly from what we've seen and are going to see during the round on social media. The visit was thanks to a partnership with Adobe. Um, what was it like to get into the communities and work with the kids and, and see them develop a passion for the game? Um, it was really good. It's always good giving back 
to your community and the younger generation. Um, the first little training we did was Hoops for Health and yeah, everyone loved it. Um, there were so many smiles and the kids were happy. So yeah, it made me really happy being out there. It was great to see you there alongside Shanice and Abby, as you mentioned. Have you had much to do with either of those girls during your basketball mm-hmm. journey? And have you taken some friendships away mm-hmm. from the trip? Um, no, so that was actually my first time meeting them. I knew of them of basketball. Um, but yeah, it's been really good. Um, really, They're really nice. And yeah, it was good to um, meet them personally. So yeah. Tell us a bit about the land in which you come from and a little bit about your community. Uh, So I was born in Albany, which is four hours down south of Perth. Um, That's the Minang. Uh, That's my dad's side. Um, My mum's side is Baladong, which is northern. And, yeah, I was raised in Perth. Now, you're playing for the Townsville Fire this season, a big game coming up against Melbourne uh, on Wednesday night, which we'll talk about. But it is Indigenous round, Ali Wilson, and we've seen some of the amazing uh, singlets on display, certainly with your game against Southside Flyers, and some of the clubs have been um, starting to share the stories of their jerseys um, on social media, and uh, I'll hand it over to you. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, Shay, um, I've seen some photos of the Townsville Fire uh, uniform and of the ones that I've seen so far, I think that it might be my favourite. Do you know much about the design and have you had the person that designed the uniform come out and, and I guess explain what thought process went into into his artwork? Yeah, so um, a couple of days ago he came in um, media and he just told us about his story and how he did it. And it was actually his first ever design he's ever done. Um, He's actually done a really good job and I'm really excited to be wearing it. Would you like to wear the jersey more than just one round? Because I I reckon I'd like to see them all year round. Shay, what what do you reckon? Um, Personally, I'd actually love to wear them, I guess, the whole season. Um, They're really good. It's, It's a lot different, but, yeah, I love the design. Ali, what about you? Because it's obviously one round where we shine the light on all things Indigenous in terms of our players, stories, community. But can we can we do more and extend it so it's not just a one round thing? Would you like to wear, you know, the Bendigo jersey every week? Yeah, definitely. I think that um, Bendigo as a club had a bit of a chat in the preseason around what we can incorporate in our um every week uniform, whether it's in the trim or whatever else have you. So I know that Bendigo as a club are certainly looking into that moving forward and that would be great. Uh, Kelsey Griffin is a huge driver of that. So um, having her in our club is awesome. Um, And I think from what I've heard is that we'll wear our Indigenous uniform for our remaining games for this season. So we'll be in them for the next three weeks, which is awesome. Yeah, love that. Nisha, you've come across to Townsville. You're back in the WNBL for a second stint after a great NBL One West campaign. What have you enjoyed most about your season with the fire I definitely enjoy uh the trainings and improving each day um yeah uh it's my first time being away from home and the girls have made it a lot easier and yeah I'm loving it over here I definitely would come back we ha- well, we love hearing that uh, on the WNBL show. Loz Mickelson was with us um, a few weeks ago and told us about you'd been out diving, I think, or been on a trip. So how good is it that you, and I think you went out to Kate Gaze's farm too and had a good time out there. So has it been really good, yeah, bonding together as a team, particularly you, you are young and being away from home for the first time? Yeah, it's really good. Um, we we catch up here um, almost every week. Uh but yeah, the girls are really nice and um, just welcoming and it's been really easy to um, have some friendships here. Ali, you, of course, played for the Townsville Fire. Any tips for Nishaya on Townsville living, um, what to do, where to go? You know, you're an OG. Um, that was many moons ago <laughs> uh, that I lived up in Townsville, so I'm sure uh, things would have changed up there. Um, but no, I just remember being extremely hot and humid and sweaty all the time. So, um, 
Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I like that weather. <laughs> Shay's nodding like, I know this life. <laughs> yeah. um, the fire are back in action this week with two massive games, including against Ali Wilson's Bendigo in the second leg. But you've got the Boomers on Wednesday night. This is going to be an absolute cracker. Um, how important is it for Townsville to keep building on the wins? Of course, last round you had two massive wins over in Perth in your home state. Yeah, um, it's definitely important for the last couple of games for us. Um, We haven't got the win against Boomers yet or Bendigo, so we're hoping to come out tough um, and hopefully get the dubs this week. And just finally, is there anyone that you've really learned from this season that's been on the Townsville team? You've got some great young talent coming through that are in the Opal squad, got great imports um, as well. Is there anyone that's kind of taking you under their wing or someone you've really sort of soaked up some learnings from? I think everyone on the team have given me some tips. Um, Yeah, I would say everyone. They're really helpful and um, I've improved a lot from everyone giving me advice. Well, it has been a team effort for Townsville this season, so it's no surprise that um, the influence on you has been from the team across the board. Thanks so much for joining us on the show today. We can't wait to see you on the fire in action this round, particularly in your Indigenous strip. Uh, Good luck this weekend and for the rest of the season. Thank you so much. Round 15 coming up this weekend of Signet WNBL. It all tips off Wednesday night in Townsville. It is going to be hot, hot, hot at the Entertainment Centre. The Fire are hosting the Boomers. We spoke to Nishaya just before. Really looking forward to this game because Townsville are on the biggest winning streak in the competition right now. How do you see this one unfolding? Yeah, this is certainly the game of the week um, for me. I think they're the two of the informed teams at the moment up in Townsville. Um, so I'm really excited to watch that one. How big is the home crowd in Townsville? You played for the Fire previously. Can they seriously have an impact on the results up there? Yeah, they're a rowdy bunch up in Townsville. <laughs> they always have been, even when I was up there many moons ago. Um, I think that they can certainly have an impact on the game, for it's, sure. It's good when you're on the Townsville team, yeah, right? Definitely. And the cowbells <laughs> are being rung in your favour. Opposition? Much better. Not so much. <laughs> uh, Thursday night, we've got Adelaide taking on Perth Lynx. It's been an up and down season for Adelaide at times, but they've had some scalps along the way too. Perth are still pushing to make the finals. Uh, what are your thoughts on this one? I think the pressure's all on Perth on this one. Mm-hmm. Adelaide don't have anything to lose um, and Adelaide are more than capable um, of winning on their day. So it would be interesting to see how that one pans out. Well, we've seen that with the UC Caps. I don't want to bring up bad memories, but they did beat Bendigo. <laughs> uh, they've got two wins now uh, for the season. They host the Lightning uh, on Saturday at the National Convention Centre. Again, two teams with nothing to lose. Anything could happen here, but I'm really excited for the matchup between Jade Melvin and Izzy. Ice. Yeah, absolutely. That'll be that'll be a good one. I'm sure that Adelaide will want to get their revenge uh, after last game. Jade has been incredible, and she was incredible in that in that last Adelaide game. Um, so super excited to watch the young guns go at it. Now, speaking of Jade Melbourne, it just made me remember. Now we spoke about that big bun energy because she's gone from the middle part low bun to a high <laughs> bun. Now, you wore your hair different at the weekend as well. I just remembered. <laughs> you did. Yes, I had it in a bun also. Like this? Like this. Yeah. You're yeah. usually a po- straight ponytail. I am ponytail yeah. always, girl. So um, it was just, it you was did, just, yeah. hair was just dirty. I didn't really want to wear it in the ponytail. Um, I don't know. Maybe I thought. Jay's playing incredible with a high bun. Maybe I should throw it up oh, in a high bun. Maybe. Were you superstitious <laughs> about the change? No, I'm not. I'm not too okay. superstitious with stuff like that. But um, yeah, we'll see. It's probably going to go back into ponytail back for the next Back to the ponytail game. Yeah, this I think week. So. <laughs> but there's not much to do when the hair's dirty. I mean, I've got that no. problem right now. Only dry shampoo can get you so far. But I, I did notice that there's been a few hair. Big hair changes yeah. in yeah. season. It doesn't get past me. Um, the second game on Saturday night involves your Bendigo spirit. You're off to Townsville taking on the fire. This is just beyond important for both of you, but particularly after um, a couple of losses for the spirit. Definitely, yeah, huge for us. Absolutely huge for us. We need to get this win. Um, so we'll see how we'll go and we'll go up there and we'll throw everything at them. How do you prepare not knowing, I guess, the status of Reid Nicholson? Of course, they've added Shyla to the mix. Um, I guess it's the same for other teams preparing to play Benigo. You don't know if you're going to have Kelsey or not. Mm -hmm. How do you sort of prepare for that, particularly when it's influential guards like that? You're not sure of their status. 
Yeah, it's a little bit difficult uh, when it comes to that. But I think for us, and especially now at the pointy end of the season, um, we're really focused on us and what we need to do well to win. Um, so whoever they sort of suit up on the night is is what they do, and we just need to focus on on doing us. Jeez, nine now is going to be getting a workout this weekend with some of these games. Continuing on Sunday, it will be a Sunday fun day at the State Basketball Centre, Southside Flyers, Perth Lynx. Now, last time they played, Perth got the win. Um, over uh, in Perth. Um, it's the second leg of a road trip for the Lynx. The Flyers will be a bit more rested because it will be um, just over a week since they beat you guys in Geelong. Um, how, do, how does this one going to work out? Because Scherf and Jackson have had a couple of good matchups. Last time they played, they both had double-doubles. So do you see the dynamic changing a bit without LJ, particularly against a team like the Lynx with the domination of Lauren Scherf? Yeah, this is an interesting one for me, and I feel like it could go any way. Um, Lauren Scherf's having an incredible season, and she's going to be a tough matchup for Southside without LJ for sure. Um, they have people that are capable of, of going to her, um, but I think that Lauren is their key for sure. Yeah. Oh, so many good matchups. Like, Rot, she's in great form. Sammy's been playing well. Um, Amy Atwell, Bibi, like... Just goes on and on. Absolutely. Good matchups yes. all over the floor. So that'll be that'll be a Sunday blockbuster. Oh, what a round ahead in the Signet WNBL. Ali Wilson, thank you so much for coming by today. It's been so fun and wishing you all the best for a massive weekend. No worries. Thanks for having me on. And yeah, we'll see what we can do. See what you can do. <laughs> Look forward to seeing you uh, in those glorious um, jerseys again. Everyone get behind Indigenous Round. Um, read up on each of the team's kits and, and see the stories you know, behind them and learn a bit more about the artists. And of course, grab your t-shirt as well. Enjoy a massive round and we'll see you next week.